Hi everyone and welcome to Brookdale Farm. I thought today we might just have a quick look at the tractor and how we actually drive it and a little bit more about the tractor. So this is a 1964 Chamberlain Countryman 6. It's a pretty old tractor now but they were solidly built tractors in their day. Uh, it's got a hundred horsepower Perkins three, uh, 6354 motor in it. This is a diesel motor uh, the fuel tank is in here. It only holds about a hundred liters, but that is enough for about eight or nine hours working it fairly hard. Uh, it's got nice big front wheels on it, and these ones were a bit unusual in that they actually had front suspension. You can see that uh, transverse spring there mounted underneath. And it actually does make a bit of a difference to the ride. These were reasonably quick tractors. They'll do 40 or 50 k's an hour down the road. Uh, and they were one of the very first tractors that would go that fast. At the moment we have our dual wheels on it. Uh, we normally don't run this outer tyre. We just have the inners. Uh, but at the moment we're seating and uh, so it's working quite hard. Uh, so we need the extra wheel for traction. The inner wheels have both got water in them to give them a bit more weight and that helps with traction as well. Now on the back of our tractor here you can see we have a PTO shaft sticking out the back. PTO stands for power takeoff. Uh, if we're running a hay baler or something like that uh, that needs some power down to it to run the machine that's where it comes from. This shaft, when the tractor revs are right, this shaft spins at 540 revs a minute. More modern tractors often use a 1000 rev PTO now. Uh, and we've got the clutch pack and the, the engagement lever here. So we'll climb up into our cab and have a bit of a look. Uh, driver's seat here. Um, instrument panel here. We've got our taco here, which tells us how fast the engine's going. Our stop, pull that out to turn the engine off. Oil pressure, it's very important with these engines, they take a little while to get oil pressure up when you first start them. So let the oil pressure come up before you rev them and let the clutch out under load. Uh, our amp meter to show us that it is in fact charging. And we've got a light here that shows us that this is the ignition light. Uh, and the temperature gauge here. So we've been working a bit today already. You can see it's already warmed up. This bit on the top here is the air seater monitor. Uh, so we've got a light here to tell us if anything goes wrong, anything stops turning on the air seater. We've got our switch here to engage and disengage it. So that takes the seater mechanism out of gear. If we're traveling along uh, or we're going around corners, moving from paddock to paddock, we put it out of gear uh, while we're not seeding. Um, and then we uh, put it back in gear as soon as we want to start seeding. This is the adjustment for the fan speed on it. So uh, it, it's got a, uh, a blower fan and this uh, adjusts how fast, at what speed the alarm will come on. We've got two shaft monitor switches here. And I'm not sure if you can see the red lights up above here. Uh, they come on to tell you which thing has failed along with the buzzer. So this is for your fertilizer and cedar boxes. These, if you've got this, these alarms coming on, your chains come off or something like that. You've got two bin alarms here, which tell you how when you're running out of seed or fertilizer. And we have a switch here that says either light only or light and horn. So if we turn the monitor on, you can see we've got a power light. The fan is not running, so that light has come on. Uh, the shafts are not turning, so these two lights are on and the main light with the horn on it. The other thing about tractors that you will notice, it's a bit hard to see here because of the uh, wiring harness for the cedar. Right down in the corner there, there's an extra pedal. That's actually the accelerator pedal. Now we also have a hand throttle as well. We have two brake pedals and a clutch pedal. 
The two brake pedals are for if you're working in a tight space and you're turning sharply, you can put one of the brakes on and it makes the tractor turn even more sharply. We've got the main gearbox here. These, these Chamberlains are only a three speed main gearbox. So we've got reverse up here, first, second and third. These Chamberlains also have a secondary gearbox in the diff and these are also a three speed. So we've got high range there, intermediate range and low range back here. That gives you a total of nine fourth gears and three reverse gears. Uh, so if we come over here around the steering wheel, this is our hand throttle here. When you're traveling along working all day, you don't want to have to keep your foot on the throttle. So we can lock the throttle at a particular setting. This also helps when we're running machinery with the PTO shaft because you need that to be running at a set speed for them to work properly. This lever down here is our hydraulics. At the moment, this is connected up to our cedar and that raises and lowers the cedar uh, in and out of the ground. We've got another little electrical box here with three switches on it. This is to control the sprayer when we're spraying. Uh, and if we come back here, this lever here is to engage and disengage the power takeoff shaft. So while we're pulling the cedar, we are running in intermediate second gear at about 1600 revs a minute. Uh, so we, we've got to start the tractor, wait for the oil pressure to come up, start the air cedar motor, turn the monitor on, engage it, clutch down, into gear, let the clutch out. I usually use the hand throttle when I'm taking off um, and then uh, then set the, the, sorry, I use the foot throttle when I'm taking off and then set the hand throttle to the speed I want it at. So we've started the air cedar motor. Uh, now we need to start the tractor. Uh, turn the air cedar monitor on. We put the tractor into second gear and gently let the clutch out. As we take off, you can see the buzzer goes out. The light and the buzzer on the air cedar monitor goes out. As we get to the end of the paddock, we want to lift the cedar out of the ground using the hydraulic lever in the bottom right hand corner of the screen. We need to remember that the seed, where the seed goes into the ground is a fair way behind us. So we need to go a fair way into the piece that is already seeded before we lift. We turn round, line ourselves back up again for the next pass and then lower the cedar back into the ground. You can see on the corner here I have missed a bit. Uh, this is because when we are turning sharp corners, if we leave the cedar in the ground, we put a huge amount of strain on all the tines and we can break them off. 
the, there are large springs when you're going forward that allow the cedar, the tine to jump out of the ground if you hit anything too hard, uh, like a big rock. When you are dragging it sideways around a sharp corner, the spring is pointing in, is moving it in the wrong direction. So if you hit something too hard, you, dra you break the tine off. So we just lift the cedar out of the ground when we're turning sharply. And when we come out of the corner, we drop it back down again and then we come and finish the corners off at the end. Thanks very much for watching everybody, I hope you've enjoyed this video and learnt a little bit from it uh, and I hope to see you again next time. Thanks, bye.